visible over here like okay if you see in my slide it's it's written over here i guess this slide is visible to all so can can you please set up in in the full screen mode please yeah yeah i'm just just setting doing it f5 Someone just uh, send you the, the answer. So some students. Yeah. That Cultural come. difference between countries directly affect the lifestyle and working style of workers that affect the business activities. Yes, you're right. Okay. So as said by one of the student, uh, she has written uh, affect the business activities. So according to me, what points I've jotted down for you all like as my told me, it's a beginning class, so we uh, we all need a background and introduction. Culture culturally close to customers and consumers. No matter how big is your brand, if if your brand, you know, don't have knowledge about the local culture, the brand will face uh, will find it difficult to be successful in that country. Yeah, you all know about big brands like Starbucks, big brands like Walmart or Magdi's and all. But all those brands have faced certain type of what you can say difficulties while establishing themselves in other countries. For example, one day I was reading about Magdi's. Magdi's are not very successful in in Vietnam. Not not you know not able to. Uh, replicate the same success in Vietnam as as it has in another countries. Walmart is a failure in Germany. Walmart is a failure in Brazil. Again, they are not able to understand, I guess, the local customer. So, if if you have an understanding of cultural differences, you will become close, more closer to your customers. Then uh, you have a flexible response to the local customer needs nowadays uh, the customers are very intelligent you you all are the customers you all are the consumers you are using your smartphones and all in one click you can check anything in entire world so the competition is more the customer is more uh, intelligent so the, their needs and preferences are changing so you need to respond for those uh, you know needs and preferences then there is a, regional and local market penetration if if you want to penetrate in in the local market of any country there, there's a saying also think global act local you you need to act local and how can you act act locally if, if you don't know the culture of that country because because uh, many businesses have fa faced the failure because they they don't know the culture of of the country which you know in which they are going for business so again, uh, this is about if if you want to penetrate in the in the local market, you need to be culturally intelligent. You need to avoid the complexity. You uh, in in the in the post market, you need you need knowledge of cultural and social aspects of the consumers. At at the same time, you you want to you know reduce your local cost of production. The cultural knowledge can help you over there. How how cultural knowledge can help you? You know to to whom you need to partner with. You know to whom you need to you know you need to be dependent for supplies. Who will be your right uh, right you know who will be the right person to supply you the material in a material in in a country or in a host country? There can be A B C D E. There can be n number of suppliers to whom you will pick it up for supplying you the raw material. The cultural intelligence can also uh, provide you competitive advantage, and there will be less usage of resources as well. If if you are culturally intelligent, you will not waste your resources. Later on, we will we will see certain videos and case studies, and I'll uh, take you over there. Like first case, it is why why Starbucks succeeds. In China, let's go to this uh, that case and try to understand something, certain things about Starbucks. Okay, why Starbucks succeed in China? So 
it is it is the entire uh, report i cannot read the whole report in front of you but uh, the you know the major crux of this report before before starbucks there were many market players who tried to penetrate in the chinese market but they were not able to penetrate the chinese market why starbucks was, was able to penetrate that chinese market because they change themselves as per the culture of of that country starbucks entered in china in 2000 before that many many coffee outlets tried to enter in china but they were, they were not successful here the the prime reason is that china is a, china is mainly a tea drinking nation is not is not a you know uh, coffee in nation similarly similar uh, to india india is also a tea drinking nation prior to that many coffee outlets tried to enter in china but they they have used the same approach as they have they were using in their home country so how starbucks was different from other coffee outlets first of all they introduced uh, like in my another link it is mentioned also when coffee enters Uh, the tea culture learning from starbucks success in china we we can also go to that link when starbucks entered in china they they have introduced a tea flavored coffee in china so they uh, they sh- uh, they they have justified this thing and they have showed it to the local customer okay we are adopting your culture as as all of us know starbucks think differently chinese people have a strong tea drinking tradition that is why many people were skeptical at first that the starbucks can break it through the chinese great wall although with all the skepticism going around starbucks continued their mission to get the chinese market starbucks starts by studying the chinese middle class try to introduce the western coffee experience where people couldn't meet their friends while drinking their favorite beverages become a global brand and long term commitment starbucks is commit, uh, committed to build to building and maintaining the starbucks experience for the for their local chinese customers first of all they have they have changed their product listing uh, they have introduced certain a new type a new product like tea flavored coffee they have introduced at the same time the starbucks have long queues if if you see like uh, how they are serving coffee in the countries like uk usa they are, they are serving coffee like uh, people are going to their offices with a cup of coffee in their hand they are standing in queues taking their cup of coffee from starbucks and uh, moving uh, to their office but in china they have a different type of setting they know in in countries like india and china people like to socialize with each other people like to talk with each other while they are taking uh, any uh, tea or coffee any beverages so they like to socialize and chinese people also like to have a cup of coffee they like to work along with on their laptops on and uh, always they you know they are always working so they have provided a big sitting space which which was not there earlier in in their home market so they have changed their strategy because they have studied the culture of china that's why they have introduced uh, those sitting space in those sitting space they have also provided laptop charging mobile phone charging so that uh, the chinese customer can easily charge their laptop at the same time they can work with convenience and on the walls they have they have uh, in the sitting space in the in the starbucks cafes they have chinese painting all around so that the local customer will feel like okay they are sitting at at, at a place which belongs to them so that's what uh, they have created the inner experience you know the experience how the customer will feel inside it is important so that's what they were providing good brand positioning was any advertisement to promote their brand they intentionally focused on selecting a store location with high traffic and high visibility to create its brand image while introducing their brand to chinese customer starbucks included a popular local ingredient that's what i have said it to you green tea tea flavored coffee so the lo- they are mixing their brand with the local chinese preference then partnering with locals lastly starbucks partnered with three regional players as a part of expansion plan china is not a homogeneous market the culture and practice in the northern part of china are different from the eastern part of china so it it is always you know uh, it is always good if if you are if you are taking help of locals because locals know the market better than you so that's what they have done they have taken 
help of the local chinese vendors to understand the market so so it was good for 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 starbucks at the same time unlike other coffee outlets starbucks was also mentally prepared that uh, the market will not give them that early success and you know it it will take a while like one or two years to you know to actually understand the culture of china so they were mentally prepared for that thing also now let me take you to a video to understand the complexity of culture wait i'm just sharing it with you Wait, I'm just sharing. Okay, this this video is about. why macd was not able to you know uh, why macd failed in vietnam let's see to this video let's see to it then we will discuss about cultural complexities more in detail king has more than 16000 locations in over 100 nations and mcdonald's has over 36000 there's one in a decommissioned airplane in new zealand and there's even one in vatican city fast food is a more than half a trillion a year business but there's one place where these chains can't seem to take off and that place is via king are failing to find a mass following in vietnam there was a lot of hype when mcdonald's first opened its doors in vietnam in 2014 the launch drew crowds of locals who waited hours to get their hands on a big mac but fast forward to today and the hype has slowed way down mcdonald's which launched in vietnam in 2014 has only 17 stores there and burger king which entered the market in 2011 has only 13 as of 2018 Failure to capture the attention of the Vietnamese market was odd given that these burger chains had previously been met with success when expanding into Asian countries. McDonald's has seen tremendous growth in countries like China and Japan where it has thousands of storefronts in both countries. And Burger King has grown its franchise in Japan from 12 restaurants in 2008 to 98 last year. McDonald's is ranked second out of all foreign fast food in mainland China behind KFC and Burger King is ranked fourth. But Vietnam was a different story. When McDonald's finally entered the Vietnamese market in 2014, it planned to open 100 stores in Vietnam within 10 years. Burger King. The company invested 40 million dollars in Vietnam in 2012 with the goal of opening 60 restaurants by 2016, according to Vietnam Business Review. And as of 2018, there are just 13 Burger Kings in Vietnam. Both McDonald's and Burger King did not respond to CNBC's questions about why they face such trouble breaking into the Vietnamese market. Fast food in the States is popular because you can get it now. Vietnamese food is the same thing. If you go to street vendors, you can get your bowl of pho or your banh mi also maybe even faster than McDonald's. So that kind of defeats the the value proposition of fast food in Vietnam. But part of the problem seems to be that fast food giants underestimated their local rivals. Vietnamese diners are spoiled for choice in top-tier cities like Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City, which has made it tough for international fast food chains to compete. For the Vietnamese, we have our bun mi sandwiches, and those sandwiches are sold on the streets at rock-bottom prices compared to McDonald's and Burger King. According to the European Commission, Vietnamese consumers dedicate a sizable portion of their income to food. And of that money spent on food, 78% of that cash went to local vendors, street stalls, and kiosks. Just 1% went toward fast food restaurants in Vietnam. Vietnam's food service sector has over 540,000 outlets. Over 430,000 outlets are local vendors and food kiosks. There's nearly 80,000 full-service Vietnamese restaurants and almost 22,000 local bars and cafes. But as for fast food chains, they account for just over 7,000 outlets in Vietnam. 
Fast food chains are so outnumbered in Vietnam partly because of the severed diplomatic ties between the US and Vietnam. After the United States withdrew forces from Vietnam following the war in 1973, all diplomatic relations were severed between the two countries in 1975. It wasn't until 1995 that the United States and Vietnam mended fences and opened the door for trade. If you know anything about like the history of Vietnam, like the last 30 to 40 years, there was a lot of growth, um, but only really in the last 20. A lot of storefronts are literally just people's homes. They'll live upstairs and they'll just convert the downstairs into any sort of street vending option. In 1997, KFC was one of the first American brands to open up shop in Vietnam, but it was entering an already crowded food market. It took seven years for KFC to open just 10 restaurants. So KFC changed course and updated its menu to better fit local tastes. The brand introduced the KFC chicken rice and the KFC shrimp burger for Vietnamese customers. And today, but the hefty price tag for KFC meals seemed to be worth it for customers. But comparatively high prices weren't unique to KFC. McDonald's and Burger King's prices are also considered to be at a premium compared to local vendors. Local vendors can feed twice as many people as a single meal does at Burger King and McDonald's at half the cost. Average people would pay about uh, two to three dollars for their lunch. That's about it, you know. And two to three dollars is quite a lot. Uh, office people they tend to go out in groups. Then uh, once in a while they would probably use McDonald's, and then all the other days. Vietnamese food on the street. But these high prices are only part of the problem for McDonald's and Burger King. The way food is served in Vietnam has a lot to do with it. When Americans go to a restaurant, they normally find something on the menu that they like and order it for themselves. In Vietnam, it's more of a family-style serving experience. Burgers have a tough sell in Vietnam because they're not really a food you want to share. They're facing two rules. I mean, first rule is you need to be able to share the food. Second rule is it needs to be chicken. When you then look at the burgers, it's not chicken, it's not terrible. And, and, uh, and I think it's just not, it's not a cuisine that, that is exciting to the, to the Vietnamese. And it doesn't look like things will be getting better for fast food chains anytime soon. More Vietnamese customers are retreating from fast food chains each year. Traffic to fast food chains dropped 31% from 2016 to 2018, while visits to street food vendors were up 70% during that two-year span. Uh, so, so when I look at these uh, American fast food chains, I, I would divide them into the burgers, the chicken, uh, and the more Italian kitchen. If we okay? food chains have failed to appeal to locals. Just take can Burger King make up 2.8 percent of the total share of foreign. Okay. Now uh, let me stop share and now let me discuss it with you all. You have seen this video. Okay. Why you think? Uh, like uh, they said, KFC is doing good in Vietnamese market. Doing that much good in Vietnamese market. Why you think so? Any any inputs after seeing this video? Do you think that you know the uh, the the people in Vietnam are not liking fast food that much, or do you think the prices were expensive, or do you think the brand MACD? fail to understand the cultural differences between Vietnam and, and, and the home country. I'm looking for your answers. Audible to all. Am I audible? Okay, 
So again, my question is same from the video. After seeing the video, I hope many of you understood the fact what is the importance of cultural differences. You know, MACD, very established brand, not able to, uh, you know, tap the Vietnamese market because in uh, they, they were not able to understand, you know, that those cultural differences, which you know, KFC are able to understand, but Burger King uh, and uh, uh, MACD were not able to understand the fact how, how to approach the Vietnamese market. Let me go to the slide once again. Yes. Okay, few students have written. KFC understands the cultural differences and has made changes in their menu to adapt to those preferences. Yes. KFC ad adjusts the flavor to suit Vietnamese people, but still retains its core value. At the same time, KFC has many promotions because KFC has adjusted the taste to suit the Vietnamese people. Besides KFC as a, okay, you, you all are writing why, why KFC was a success. But uh, behind, uh, you know, uh, in your mind, you also know now why MACD was a failure. MACD was not able to understand all those differences. Let me share my screen once again with all of you. Let's continue with the slides. Okay. This is how MACD conquered India that we will see to it later. Like this is one of the, uh, you know, uh, one of the Hofstede model we say, Hofstede theory, which is, which is very important. Uh, till now, you know, what is the importance of understanding the cultural differences? How, how to read the culture of a particular country? There is one model which has been given. One student has written some response. Yes, I'll get back to you. And now let's discuss a theory, theory which helps us to understand the culture of a country. There's a Hofstede cultural uh, dimension and the Hofstede cultural dimension have different components. Like you can see in my, in my uh, slide, power distance, individualism, masculinity, uncertainty, avoidance, long-term orientation and indulgence. These, these are the, you know, six uh, components of off-street cultural dimension. And on the basis of these components, you can, you can read the culture of any country. Like we can, we can do this exercise also. Uh, one minute. We can do this exercise here. Country comparison. Okay. So here it is. Countries comparison description and all. I'm just choosing country. Like if we if we choose one country like India. Another country, Vietnam. And we try to compare the culture of two countries. How the hop seat model will help us. Power distance, 17 and 70. So more or less both the... Like here it is, you can see. Power distance, what is power distance? The theory said the extent to which the less powerful members of institution and organization within a country expect and accept the power is distributed unequally. In a countries like Vietnam or a country like India, the bosses have the power. You know, the, the decision making is top down. At the same time, there is more and more centralization. Like India scores highest high on this dimension 77, indicating an appreciation for hierarchy and a top-down structure in society and organization. Well, yeah, we, we follow our bosses, we follow our seniors, we follow our parents and all. If, uh, if one were to encapsulate the Indian attitude, one could use the following words and phrases dependent on the boss 
or the power holder so so power distance is more between senior and junior between bosses and their subordinates acceptance of unequal rights between the power privileged and those who are lesser down in the peaking order immediate supervisor so this is this is the first component of of state cultural dimension so more or less india vietnam have same culture when uh, you know when you talk about power distance if we add one more country here united kingdom you see the power distance score for united kingdom is only 35 so it means this this is a country with less power distance okay in comparison to india and china there is not like whatever the bosses are saying you need to follow it you have your own say another component is individualism if if you talk about individualism india is scoring 48 united kingdom is scoring 89 and and uh, vietnam is scoring 20 only so Uh, vietnam is highly collectivistic culture this this i can talk like uh, whatever decision you are taking either taking a decision about your education taking decision about your marriages taking decision about purchasing something like car or something you know you are always taking those decision collectively in uh, you know in while to- uh, with uh, after talking to your parents after talking to your relatives after talking to your friends and all so that's what how the decision making is Uh, uh, the nation like india and uh, and vietnam they are following v culture v collectivistic culture india also has a score of 48 in individualism it means india is a collectivist culture because the score for collectivism is 52 so uh, but india is not that much collectivist as as vietnam is but uh, uh, you know united kingdom is scoring 8 nine on this so they are highly individualistic they take decision on their own it is i culture they have a masculinity in the score for masculinity india and united kingdom are are scoring high on masculinity 56 and 66 but vietnam is scoring 40 so vietnam is a feminine culture let's understand what is feminine and what's what is uh, you know masculine a high score for masculine on this dimension indicates that the society will be driven by competition achievement and success with success being defined by the winner best in the field a value system that starts in the school and continues throughout the organizational life so if you have a masculine culture your your society you know it's it's driven by competition the the more a person will achieve the more he you know he will get accolades accolades the more you know acceptance from society so india and uh, united kingdom are such a uh, such culture in which competition achievement and success are taken on on a higher side but in contrary if you talk about vietnam vietnam is uh, scoring high for feminine because for masculinity their score is only how much the score is 40 so 60 is for feminine what are the feminine value the fundamental issues of uh, feminine uh, uh, society is one where the quality of life is a sign of success and standing out from the crowd crowd is not admirable the fundamental issue what motivates people love affection care for others all such things matters in a society so vietnam is a, is a, is a is a country in which these things matters a lot more than the competition achievement and success so when when you are a, when you are a company coming from a developed world uh, like if you are coming uh, from uh, from united kingdom or usa you need to you need to take it a point like it is not a masculine society so you need to show show love show affection care for others then then there is a chance for you to understand the culture of vietnam then there is a uncertainty avoidance uncertainty avoidance like united kingdom and vietnam are close 35 30 india is also 40 so all the all the three nations have have a low score for uncertainty avoidance the extent to which the members of a culture feel threatened by an ambig- uh, ambiguous or unknown situations and have created beliefs and institution that try to avoid this is reflected in the score on uncertainty avoidance uh, let me show you a difference if in place of united kingdom i take a country japan okay you see what's the score of japan in uncertainty avoidance 
92 it means the people in japan they are not very much they are not very much threatened with the unambiguous situation with the like uh, whatever uh, be the things uh, like in future they are not threatened with unknown situation because japan is the country which uh, the country faced a lot in in past they have faced a nuclear attack on hiroshima and nagasaki in the second world war afterwards uh, they have also taken this uh, tsunami and all the, the country has been uh, devastated many a times but still they are progressing at a very good pace they have this this power to come back again and again so that's what uh, you know uh, that's what they, they believe in themselves that's why their score is 92 when you talk about uncertainty avoidance here you can check then there is a long term orientation and short term orientation how much people is uh, whether the people are long term oriented or short term oriented if if uh, if a society is short term oriented then the society will take quick decision then the negotiation will be very faster. If a society is long-term oriented, like, like Japan is showing a, 80, a score of 88, India 51 and Vietnam 57. So more or less, all three countries are long-term oriented. They take time in decision-making and they take time in developing trust and faith in people from other countries. If, if you see the score of China on this uh, orientation, it will cross 90. So if, if you are, uh, if you are belong to a country which, you know, which believes in long-term orientation, it is, it is very hard for any negotiator to go through, uh, you know, to negotiate at an early pace while the people on other, other side, like uh, in UK, USA, they expect quick decision-making. So quick decision making is not possible with a society which, uh, which seeks uh, long term orientation. Then, then there is indulgence as well. The last component, the extent to which people try to control their desires and impulses. So if, if, you, if you check the score in indulgence, India is 26. Indulgence, uh, Japan is 42 and Vietnam is 35. All three have, have the control over their desires and impulses. We, we know how to control our desires and impulses because people are uh, mainly coming from middle class and all. This, uh, everyone wants, everyone aspire like, I should have Mercedes, but they can't afford it. How, how, you, how you are impulsing your desires and all. Now let's go back to the slides. Okay, so key terms, negotiation, negotiation will be, you know, will take much time. If, uh, if, if you are in a society which has a high or, or have a long term orientation, communication, uh, communication also in certain uh, cultures, communication is indirect, while in other cultures, communication is direct. There's a whole model which talks about communication personal style leadership also varies with culture to culture power if power distance is more then the leadership will be autocratic in nature whatever the bosses are saying you need to follow that thing you you have lesser say in that your overall organization then there is a uh, religion religion also matter when you talks about social and cultural things you also need to take in account religion. Like Magdi when it started in India, uh, what uh, they, they have launched Alu Tikki Burger in, to become successful in India. Because they know India is a country with the, it, more than 80% people belong to Hindu, Hindu religion. And in Hindu religion, uh, people uh, don't like to take, uh, don't like to eat uh, much uh, like uh, beefs and all because it hurts their religious sentiments so that's why uh, you know that's why they have introduced a new uh, flavor of mac alu tikki okay. so if if brands are not uh, not compatible with with the with the, what you can say the cultural differences they will not be able to survive let's go to another slide 
this is how cultural I'll, I'll get back to it first let me take to hall's framework then the hall's framework uh, talks about communication and all this is another theory which helps you to understand the cultural differences there is one set of people which belongs to low context culture there is another set of people which belongs to high context culture low context culture highly individualism oriented culture high context culture collectivistic culture culture are explicit in manner they focus on requirements avoid merging of issues they they are very precise punctual they they, they expect fast decision making and all if if they have to say no to something they can easily say no but in a collectivistic culture people are implicit in manner like like in countries like india we often don't know uh, we often hesitate to say no for anything or or we don't know the art of saying no most of the time your body language tells the another person that he or she may not be happy with you or he he or she will not agree with this they, they are highly committed to long term relationship relax these these are the countries with low context culture germany united states united kingdom france the countries which which you know which belongs in individualism mainly are in you know low context culture the countries which belongs to high, uh, collectivism mainly are in high context culture like countries like china india west africa greece so this is what it is all about technical platforms like you talk about uh, you talk about culture let's let's take one more thing related to culture in this era we all know in the in the last two years or so if if you don't uh, know the technology it is hard for your business and for yourself to survive in the market what is what is the one thing that that keep us connected together why we are we are thinking about uh, going bond global since the day our product has been launched in the in the in the market because of the technology because we have facebook because we have youtube google twitter whatsapp instagram different different technological platform now if you read uh, if you check the articles uh, china has a censorship over the social media the the, the government is saying you, you you use our own social media they have weibo they have a, a ding tok they have their own social media platform google is a very fine search engine in india and everyone is using google and and in other countries as well but in but in china google is not in very much in use only the elite class of customer is using google they are using baidu so again this is also a part of you know cultural differences if somebody is going uh, to do business in china they 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 need to be aware about this thing that the technical platform they need to be use those those are the technical platforms which have been built in china only so you should know how to use those technical platforms let let me share one one of my research paper with you all or redmi xiaomi which i have written in uh, 2020 so i'm just sharing over here in the chat box if you can go through it one minute i'm just sharing it with you it's just getting down this is this is my google scholar account where you can check my all the research work you can also check me on research gate there's a paper which i have written this is shomi's uh, journey in india a roller coaster ride i'm just sharing this with all of you Thank you. 
If you can go through it quickly, wait, I'm just here. It's sending. Okay, I hope uh, you got the file. Please, please open the file and check check it. I'm also sharing the same on my screen. This article I have published in the year 2020 and it was in Scoopus journal. So it is, it is about a case study why, why Xiaomi was so successful in India, though it's not a brand of India, it's a brand of China. But even then it was successful in India, why? What was about the business model? Again, again, if you see the abstract, Xiaomi entered in China, Indian market in 2014 after China, India was the most important market for Xiaomi. With the help of this case, author discussed about the market entry initial success culture plays an important role for any foreign, foreign market player. In this case, there will be a discussion on cultural similarity between India and China. And slowly and gradually, Xiaomi becomes the most dominant player in the smartphone segment in India. They have captured the position of number one in India in 2018. So with the help of this case, the authors will explain the market entry strategies, unique business model of the company that help them to gain the market share. This case can be useful for management student as well as professional culture and its implication. So it's a, it's a, it's a very good case if you want to understand the cultural, uh, you know, uh, about the cultural similarity and how it helps in marketing success. This is about Indian smartphones the market I have discussed in that. And then the journey of uh, Xiaomi in India. Then the parity between India and China. Xiaomi took the decision to enter in China uh, like uh, because the host country has cultural similarity. That time, if, if Xiaomi wants, they, they could have entered in Brazil, they could have entered in UK, they could have entered in USA. But what they have decided, they have decided to enter in Indian market because of the similarity in India and Chinese market. Though politically, if, if you say that India is entirely different from, from China, India, India is a, it's a democratic nation while China is a communist. But cultural wise, you know, uh, both the countries are, have the, uh, one is uh, at number one in the terms of population, another one is at number two. The consumption, the purchasing power parity, uh, more of uh, middle class in, in, both the, in both the countries. At the same time, uh, the people have uh, good purchasing power. People, uh, people like uh, to spend money on, on uh, advanced features and all. So that's what uh, this case is all about. Now I'm keeping the floor open. After going through this case, as this is my first lecture of lecture series. I'll continue with uh, this cultural differences lecture in the in another class because I have missed time only five seven minutes. In case you want to ask any queries, you can ask me. Just go through the case quickly. Whatever queries you want to ask me, you can ask me.
So I'll just wait for a moment. My students are preparing questions, okay? They're still typing the questions. In India, with its hand eating culture, okay, this affects food multinational. What are your thoughts on this matter? Do these companies have this major cultural obstacle? Okay, this hand eating culture, like we take, we eat rice and all with hands and all, but. Uh, I can. I want to answer this question on the basis of of the brands which are already doing good in India. McD is doing good in India. KFC is doing good in India. Burger King is doing good in India. So Indians are very much adjustable when it when you know the the coming generation or the generation uh, uh, like like me and all. Okay, we we eat by hands like rice and all the Indian processed food we eat by hands. But when we are taking fast food and all, it's it's not an obstacle. We can adjust to it. Okay, if you are sitting in a restaurant uh, taking burgers and all, you you're not you know uh, that that hand eating is not not an obstacle. So I don't think many many food outlets coming from many fast food outlets or foreign food outlets, American food outlets, uh, they they are very much successful in Indian market. So I don't think this thing this thing has uh, you know affected uh, the brands a lot. I guess I answered your question. As far as I know, IBM once bought the Dutch company from India, but the Indian employees had to quit their jobs at IBM because of cultural differences. I can't find any documentation on this. Can you, can you explain it like IBM? Again, you, you see uh, there, are, uh, there are others, uh, similar things happen with other countries, other companies as well. According to you, another question, how does Vietnamese culture affect to business and Vietnamese company in India? Look, uh, one one cultural effect have already shown it to you. I'm just coming to the question uh, of IBM also. Let me answer this thing. Like uh, a Vietnamese culture, you have already seen one uh, one uh, you know cultural difference. How it affected uh, the the brand like MACD or the brand like KFC. So Vietnamese cultures are more or less similar to India. But to an extent, the, you, uh, the Vietnamese are more reserved in comparison to India. Like the score for a collectivism for India is 48, but the score uh, no, for India is 52, but the score for collectivism for Vietnam is 80. So when it comes to decision making, decision making is directly related to the purchase of something. If you're purchasing a car, you're taking a division outside your country. So you, you are highly collectivist culture. 
So sometimes the decision making can be time consuming, or sometimes the decision which with uh, uh, if an individual would have taken that decision, the decision would would have been a positive decision. But collective uh, collectivist decision can can be a like you are you are involving opinions of many, so it can go against that. So brands need to uh, need to face this thing like. Like uh, uh, Burger King have faced, McD have faced, probably other brands will also face uh, same thing when when it comes to Vietnam for business and all. Vietnamese are are more reserved even in comparison to India. Another question. I'm just uh, going back to that question. IBM and Dutch. Okay. I can uh, I don't know about the real reason why why the uh, you know employees. Of IBM have left uh, that that uh, Dutch thing. What what happened internally? Because I didn't uh, read about this case and all IBM and Dutch. Yeah, I know uh, employees have left. Probably the reason from my side is against uh, is uh, uh, probably the reason was same cultural adjustment to to different type of culture and they were not able to you know uh, accumulate themselves. That's why. The employees uh, face that uh, face this difficulty and they have left it. According to you, India has many religions and belief. Okay, what effect does this have on entry of multinational? Yes, India has many religions and belief. India has Hindus, India has Muslims, Christian, Parsis, different different types of communities. India has different types of eating habits. India has different types of clothes, you know, different types of festivals and all. But when you talk about uh, a multinational, if a multinational want to enter in India, they, they need to check the dominant characteristic and the dominant characteristic, like more than 82% people in India are Hindus. One religion, Hindu religion is dominating. So they, they will make their product as per, you know, uh, to the religion, which is most dominating. To the beliefs which which you know, a mass number of people are carrying. At the same time, I'm again saying it to you: Indians are very flexible. They belong to Hindu religion. They belong to Muslim religion. They're very flexible when it comes to usage of brand, when it comes to eating habits and all. Uh, normally, you know, you say in uh, in ancient times, like hundred years or so, Hindus were not eating even chickens. No, 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 no non-veg food. But now they are eating. Uh, many of the Hindus are uh, eating chickens and all. So, so they are very adjustable, flexible. That's why multinationals are not facing that 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 uh, difficulty in Indian culture. What cultural barriers and difficulties do multinational companies face when entering in India? The, the most prominent cultural barrier uh, the multinational face, as I told you uh, just recently. India is a different set of religions, different, you know, different set of people, different set of eating habits. East India is different. West India is different. South India is different. North India. Attitudes of people is different at the same time. The language, the language is different. So North India people speak Hindi. In South India, people have their own regional languages. And in, uh, in East India, people have their own regional languages. But uh, one language, which is the official business language, is English. So India itself is a is a very diverse country with with different different cultures altogether. So I guess these are the challenges which faced by the multinational. Do you think that the Indian culture will change in some aspects after the outbreak of COVID nineteen, like the spiritual culture, for example? Yes, Indian. Uh, I don't see like COVID nineteen will change the Indian culture that much. But yes, a part of our culture, an aspect of our culture, like yoga, and uh, at the same time. We, we believe in uh, medicine, homopathy. So that, that homopathy is, uh, you know, floating around uh, around all the world. In, uh, nowadays, people are also celebrating International Yoga Day on 21st of June. So yoga and all such things, uh, the ancient things which were in Indian culture are coming back. And those things have been, you know, uh, have been adopted by others as well. Spirituality, okay. The people, uh, few uh, like few of Indians used to believe in spirituality and all. They will start, they will keep believing that thing. I don't see like COVID nineteen has made any any special impact on that thing. So so that's that's my answer from my side. Anyone else? My or we can wind it up because the time is up for me.
Okay, thank you very much, Anush, for spending time with us today. So I think that uh, my students will provide a lot of useful knowledge on culture in general, especially the differences between Indian culture in, in, in Vietnam. And we're looking forward to the next lecture to our students. So thank you very much for today. I will send you a schedule for next two lectures and also the recording, okay? So thank you very much. Okay another question if you want to answer yeah okay what is business etiquette and protocol in india business <laughs> etiquette as i told you the power distance is high you need to be you, you know you need mm. okay uh, yeah, but as as the culture you know as the as we are progressing uh, then the coming generation the power distance is also you know getting shrinking day by day at the same time if you see individualism score for india is 48 and in the coming time or in the 10 years or so it will be uh, it will uh, you know uh, nearly will be 50 so india is slowly slowly moving from collectivist to in individualistic country because the people in the urban society have a different type of mindset people living in the rural have a different type of mindsets at the same time, if you talk about deadlines and all, uh, in, in India, people are not that much strict. Older generation are not very much strict to deadlines and all. But yeah, uh, now that this generation is very much strict to deadlines and all. Business etiquettes, when you are meeting somebody, someone first time, you often see uh, you have to greet well, you have to give respect. Respect is, is matters a lot in Indian culture. At the same time, we, we, we believe in relationship making long time commitment we we are not taking anyone for on the board or for the business just for 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 a one month or two months you always think like uh, for a period of two years or five years or so so these these are the small small things uh, later on i can explain it in my another lecture thank you thank you very much thank you very much and see you next time see you next week okay next week okay okay thank you very okay. much thank you bye thank you bye bye Bye.
đó thì khó nghe quá hôm sau thì nếu mà nhiều bạn quá thì cũng như cô dạy nhà trường cô cũng chức tôi online nhưng mà nếu mà cô thông tin thì cô sẽ dùng cái tai nghe em có được thôi thì các bạn sẽ nghe được nhưng mà vì trên 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 cái này này thì cô chỉ dùng một thiết bị thôi ấy trên zoom ấy nên là các bạn không nghe được à, nói cái biểu tượng này, này nó có ý nghĩa được nó có ý nghĩa rất là quan trọng trong văn hóa vì là chúng ta có thể hiểu biết được các cái văn hóa nếu mà mình không hiểu cái biểu tượng này à, vừa cô nói như này thơ giãn ra các bạn có nhớ vi sinh có cấp ba nào không có bao nhiêu ấy gạo đen là giã bao lâu lớn gạo giã xong rồi chẳng tự không thì hay là hay là của cô học với các bạn thử học nhỉ à, cô nói cái điều đấy thì vì à, khi mà chúng ta hiểu văn hóa hiểu các tác phẩm văn học hiểu cái câu chuyện story ở đây nếu không hiểu cái biểu tượng đấy thì rất là khó để hiểu sâu sắc à, có lẽ đây chắc các bạn để đọc cái quyển à, cái quyển là nhà giả kim rồi không đúng không cái quyển đấy có nghĩa là quyển sách khá là hay và uh, quyển đấy nếu mà chúng ta đọc và chúng ta không hiểu được những cái biểu tượng trong đấy thì rất là khó để hiểu cái câu chuyện ở trong cái cái câu chuyện đấy à, biểu tượng của người đi tìm giấc mơ tại tổ biểu tượng của đàn tiên người đi tìm thao báu rồi trong câu chuyện đấy còn nói đến hình ảnh mà uh, cô nghĩ là rất là có ý nghĩa với tất cả chúng ta đấy là hai mặt đầu À, người ta phải cầm hai cái dòng dầu trên tay với mục tiêu là không làm đổ hai dòng dầu. Thế thì à, có một người cứ đi đường ấy, cứ chăm chăm nhìn vào hai dòng dầu như là người ta đang trong hai dòng dầu, thì cô cứ chăm chăm nhìn vào hai cái dòng dầu đấy và cô không nhìn cảnh tượng xung quanh cô nó có những cái gì. Thế thì nó bị cái việc là một con người cầm hai dòng dầu trên tay là biểu tượng cho một cuộc phiêu lưu của cuộc sống của chúng ta. Hai dòng dầu đấy là biểu tượng cho cái mục đích sống của mình nếu mà trong cuộc sống mình cứ đi nhìn hai dòng dầu cô đi các bạn biết là vì khi mà dòng bát nước ấy thì mình phải nhìn nó bát nước này nó mới không đổ đúng không nếu mà thế thì mình đã không biết là mình đã đi qua những cái gì đúng không mình đã trải qua những cái điều gì ở ngay đường có kinh nghiệm gì không thế thì cuộc sống như là trong cái chuyện này nói là cuộc sống chính dung và một cái công cư luôn tôi luôn luôn để tâm đến cái mục đích của tôi là hai dòng dầu tôi không quên tận hưởng những cái điều xung quanh những cái điều tốt đẹp và xảy ra trên đường đấy chính là cái biểu tượng mà chúng ta muốn hiểu được văn hóa hiểu được những câu chuyện thì chúng ta phải tìm được biểu tượng đấy biểu tượng Việt Nam áo à, dài hoa sen đúng không và cuốn tổ tiên đây là những cái được cây tre trong nốt đúng không cây tre nó biểu tượng cho những cái đặc tính của con người để cô quay lại cái đỉnh văn này đấy những cái từ như là biểu tượng câu chuyện này cái này là nó thể hiện cho những cái cấu phần của văn hóa văn hóa có những cái gì Vậy thì nhìn chung lại nhé à, Nhìn chung lại là chúng ta sẽ nhìn vào văn hóa à, Có những cái đặc điểm như thế này Chúng ta sẽ áp dụng cái khái niệm nó đơn giản thôi Thì chúng ta có thể hiểu được uh, Apply knowledge Talking about college programming of course Did you write? That people used to be great experience Generally social behavior And this knowledge from values to attitudes and influence behavior. Đây là ý nghĩa được đưa ra sách của chúng ta. Sách này là trong textbook của chúng ta. Đây chúng ta sẽ hiểu là apply knowledge ở đây là cái kiến thức mà chúng ta có được. Tại sao lại nói là kiến thức của chúng ta có được? Bởi vì chúng ta đâu có sinh ra và đã có văn hóa đúng không? Có phải là một đứa bé nó sinh ra nó đã có sẵn văn hóa trong người đâu? Nó đâu có đặc điểm mà sinh học đâu đúng không? Nó là tất cả những gì mà chúng ta tiếp thu được trong quá trình thượng hành Về cách hành xử, về về cái cái gọi là uh, giá trị này Rồi những cái lễ nghi, những cái tôn giáo, cái hiểu được Tất cả những kiến thức đấy mà chúng ta có được trong cái quá trình của chúng ta lớn Và chúng ta kể cả đến cuối đời chúng ta vẫn tiếp thu được uh, Và có tất cả những kiến thức đấy để chúng ta thể hiện được những cái kinh nghiệm Rồi là có những cái, cái, cái hành xử của mình để chúng ta hiểu được những cái gì mà chúng ta đã trải qua Để chúng ta hiểu được là tại sao người ta phải hành xử như vậy Đúng không? Trong mỗi bối cảnh chúng ta sẽ biết là gì Integrate experience and generate social behavior Chúng ta có được những kiến thức như vậy Thì trong mỗi bối cảnh cụ thể Thì chúng ta sẽ có cách hành xử một cách phù hợp Và uh, trong tất cả những kiến thức như vậy thì chúng ta có Cái về giá trị này Rồi là những cái uh, thái độ của những cái ảnh hưởng 
và để hiểu rõ hơn về mặt văn hóa và để khi mà nhìn vào một nền văn hóa một quốc gia thì chúng ta có thể thể hiện cái văn hóa đấy như thế nào thì các bạn nhìn thấy ở trên đây là một cái mô hình văn hóa được đưa ra à, và nó đưa ra theo kiểu là ba hình tròn cái vòng tròn bên trong của cái này the inner ring là the implicit basic assumption that guide people behavior những cái giả định ngầm những cái giả định rất là căn bản mà con người dựa vào đấy người ta sẽ có cái cách hành xử nó phù hợp cô muốn nói đến là uh, cô rất là hay lấy về cái collectivism với individualism cái cách người ta nhìn nhận người ta là ai trong xã hội thì người ta sẽ có cái cách hành xử phù hợp tôi hãy nhìn nhận tôi là một ngang bằng người khác tôi là một cá nhân và tôi là người có thay đổi có quyền thay đổi cái số phận của tôi thì người ta sẽ cố gắng hiểu khác đúng không các bạn chứ còn những việt nam chúng ta lại là uh, con vua thì lại làm vua con sãi ở chùa để quét nhà ta đúng không nếu mà chúng ta có quan điểm như vậy thì rõ ràng là cái cách hành xử này cái uh, thái độ của chúng ta cái norms và values của chúng ta sẽ khác và tiếp theo cái vòng một bên giữa tức là chúng ta có cái sự căn bản là tôi là phải nhận được là tôi có quyền thay đổi số phận đúng không ạ tôi sẽ có cách hành xử và có cái giá trị cái norms là là chúng ta gọi là cách hành xử đặc trưng đúng không thì trước chúng ta học cách hành xử đặc trưng là ví dụ như là tình đáng hiếu thì như thế nào đúng không cái đáng nghỉ thì như thế nào rồi đặc uh, trong bữa ăn thì như thế nào đúng không rồi là trong các cái tình huống thì chúng ta phải ứng xử như thế nào thì mới là phù hợp thì đấy gọi là cách hành xử đặc trưng và những cái giá trị ở đây không biết là ai còn nhớ là ý nghĩa là giá trị là gì không ạ và giá trị để không thì chúng ta có thể lấy ví dụ là trong uh, văn hóa Việt Nam chúng ta thì chúng ta coi trọng đến giá trị như thế nào tại sao cái uh, khi mà người ta đã kết hôn rồi thì trong văn hóa của chúng ta cái việc ly hôn nó cũng khó hơn là phương Tây đúng không các bạn thấy nó khó hơn đúng không vì người ta coi trọng cái gì gia đình đúng không? Chữ lễ nghĩa đúng không? Lễ nghĩa rồi sợ là xấu mặt gia đình đúng không? Rồi là uh, con cái rồi mà còn rất là quan trọng hơn là hạnh phúc của mình. Kể cả sống với người chồng người vợ của mình có cảm thấy là không cảm thấy hạnh phúc nhưng mà vì con cái đúng không? Vì mọi người xung quanh người ta vẫn sẵn sàng chấp nhận điều đấy. Còn ví dụ ở phương tây thì tỷ lệ ly hôn nó có thể sẽ cao hơn bởi vì là người ta nghĩ rằng là đối với họ hạnh phúc của họ mới là quan trọng nhất đúng không? Đấy thì cái này thì giá trị mà không quan trọng này thôi là rất là nhiều người có thể sẵn sàng hy sinh thân mình để vì độc lập của đất nước đúng không người ta có thể sẵn sàng chết hoặc là người ta có thể sẵn sàng hy sinh mình vì một cái lý tưởng gì đấy những cái giá trị không quan trọng này à, giá trị này thì uh, kỳ trước chúng ta học ấy nó là abstract values about what is right or what is wrong what is happiness what is sad tất cả những cái ý tưởng vô hình về chuyện thế nào là đúng thế nào là sai trong xã hội giúp những cái quan điểm về chuyện là thế nào là hạnh phúc thế nào là tình yêu đúng không ạ thế nào là lễ nghĩa thế nào là sự tôn trọng đấy là những cái quan điểm của người ta bởi vì các bạn biết là những cái chuyện đấy chẳng là có đúng hay là thế nào là sai cả đúng không ví dụ như là ở việt nam thì dụ các bạn gọi cô thì sẽ thường là thêm một cái từ như cô mai đúng không thế còn ra nước ngoài cô có thể gọi thầy cô bằng tên một thầy điều đấy không có nghĩa là ra nước ngoài nó gọi là sai thì đối với họ cái cách gọi đấy không phải là thể hiện sự tôn trọng hay là không đấy thì cái cái đấy là nó mang tính chất tương đối và phụ thuộc vào cái sự và cái quan điểm về mặt văn hóa đấy và cái ngoài vòng cái cùng này là cái thứ mà chúng ta không nhìn thấy được explicit artifacts and products of society những cái thứ hữu hình à, ví dụ như là à, thể hiện ra là những cái biểu tượng này là văn hóa văn nghệ cái cổng trèo mà ở văn hóa việt nam của chúng ta đúng không rồi là cách lịch sự có thể thể hiện bằng ngôn ngữ có thể thể hiện bằng cử chỉ đúng không? có thể thể hiện bằng cái cách chào hỏi vân vân cái bên ngoài là những cái cái, cái hữu hình còn những thứ bên trong là những cái thứ vô hình và cái này này là những thứ bạn thường người ta không bao giờ học đến người ta không bao giờ người ta sẽ uh, quan tâm đến cái này khi mà người ta gặp phải một cái tình huống là cái sự xung đột về mặt văn hóa ví dụ như người ta biết là uh, ở Nhật 
Nong sẽ dự đoán trước đấy là gặp sếp thì sẽ cúi chào đúng không? Các bạn biết là càng cúi sâu như thế này, người ta cúi thậm chí 90 độ thì thể hiện là tôi rất là tôn trọng nhau sếp đấy. À, thế thì đấy là cái hình sự đặc trưng. Vậy thì giá trị của họ là gì? Giá trị của họ là cái sự tôn ti trật tự đúng không? Sự coi trọng thứ độ trong xã hội. Đấy là giá trị. Thế còn cái giả định ngầm sau đấy, giả định ngầm tại sao con người có người này hơn người khác? Tại sao cái thứ độ cao hơn người này là hơn người? Đúng không ạ? Thế là tại sao đàn ông nhìn thấy hơn phải có quan trọng hơn phụ nữ đúng không? Thì cái giả định ngầm như thế thì thường là trong cái bối cảnh mà có sự xuất đột về mặt văn hóa thì người ta sẽ có thể người ta giải thích, người ta sẽ nghĩ đi nó thôi. Còn đâu người ta chỉ biết là ở tôi tôi xã hội của tôi rất tôn trọng như vậy và xã hội của tôi có cách hình sự như vậy. Thì chúng ta có thể nhìn vào đấy để chúng ta biết là văn hóa nó có một cái cấu phần như thế nào. Đây, thêm một chút nữa nhé về cái chuyện là à, cái ý giá trị bởi vì đây là một cái cấu phần cực kỳ quan trọng để khi mà chúng ta muốn hiểu được một bởi vì cái cô nói là cái phần bên trong cái basic assumption không phải là cái dễ dàng mà hiểu được thế nhưng mà cái value là cái mà chúng ta có thể nhìn và chúng ta có thể thấy à, value is basic conviction that people have about what is right or what is wrong uh, what is good or what is bad what is important or what is not important abstract idea about that and value from the bedrock of the culture cảm nhận đó là cái sự sống tạo ra cái nền tảng của văn hóa uh, for example it may be called a, a society attitude towards such concept as individual freedom uh, democracy truth justice uh, honesty rights social obligation collective responsibility and tất cả cái quan điểm này thì nó sẽ là triển ra nó sẽ thể hiện cái giá trị của xã hội như thế nào ví dụ một cái quan điểm mà nhiều khi chúng ta quan tâm đến cái khái niệm về thành công đúng không định nghĩa về sự thành công ví dụ trong những người mà theo thiên chúa giáo thì người ta định nghĩa là cái sự thịnh vượng cái sự thành công prosperity nó liên quan chặt chẽ đến của cải và tôi tích lũy càng nhiều của cải thì tôi càng được gọi là thành công và tôi càng được gọi là thịnh vượng thế nên là weber uh, w e b e r Bây giờ là người nghiên cứu của văn hóa thấp nổi tiếng thì ông ấy nói rằng có một mối liên hệ thấp chiều giữa những cái giá trị của những người theo Christianity, theo thiên chủ đạo và sự phát triển của chủ nghĩa tư bản ở Mỹ và các nước châu Âu. Tức là bởi vì họ có quan điểm là cái sự tích lũy của cả các bạn, cái giá trị như vậy. Thế còn các bạn xem là những cái văn hóa khác, ví dụ như là đạo, như là đạo Phật, có một đạo Phật là triết lý của đạo Phật thì để liên quan không nhiều đến của cả mà nó là sự trưởng thành, sự thay đổi mặt tinh thần đúng không? sự giác ngộ đúng không? chúng ta đã tìm có nhất bạn đúng không? thì cái sự mặt tinh thần nó sẽ có giá trị cao hơn của cả à, à, những cái lý thuyết những cái triết lý liên quan đến nó rất là khác với thiên chúa, lúc thiền rồi là đạo đạo phật này hay là các bạn có nghe đến uh, story xin đừng đúng không? đạo chủ nghĩa khắc kỷ đúng không? Stoicism nó là một cái triết lý sống và nói rằng là cái hạnh phúc thực sự của con người ấy, nó là cái thức hạnh cái thức hạnh của con người nó không phải là cái thức hạnh là từ cái ngôn ngữ như ngôn hạnh đâu mà nó là tìm được cái sự tình cảm của tâm hồn Stoicism các bạn search cái chủ nghĩa khắc kỷ và có thể là cái cái lối sống đấy cũng bây giờ khá là phổ biến bởi vì là uh, Stoicism có rất nhiều cái giống như đạo Phật À, và họ nói rằng là uh, cái khi mà uh, họ đều tìm về cái sự trưởng thành về mặt và về mặt tâm trí về mặt tinh thần về mặt về mặt, về mặt, về mặt uh, của cải và về mặt vật chất thế thì những cái các bạn thấy là khi mà cô nói con nó có rất nhiều thứ trong cuộc sống của chúng ta cảm giác nó rất là đa dạng đúng không bởi vì là con người ở mỗi nền văn hóa khác nhau và mai họ có những chiếc lý sống khác nhau thì nó có những cái giá trị rất là khác nhau đúng không ạ? Chính vì thế mà khi mà cô nói với các bạn là cô sẽ giới thiệu về cái nhân văn hóa thì các bạn thấy là nó có rất nhiều thứ khác nhau. Bản thân cô thì kể cả cô có hơn các bạn đến bao nhiêu tuổi cô cảm thấy cũng rất là khó khăn khi mà mình nói về cái vấn đề như thế này. Thì đây là những cái mà cô đã rút ra được và cô đã tổng kết được khi mà đặt về văn hóa thì giới thiệu cho các bạn biết và để kỹ hơn thì các bạn có thể xem một số cái ví dụ nhé. 
là lấy xong mặt à văn hóa mỹ thì như thế nào văn hóa hiện tại như thế nào rồi đăng ký được một văn hóa như thế nào thì hôm sau chúng ta sẽ không trao đổi với nhau cái này đúng không nó cái này cũng khá là nhiều thì các bạn có thể đọc sẵn có thể cái cái này là ở trong sách này cái này ở trong sách nhưng một số thứ thì không trong sách sẽ là kết hợp cả hai còn hôm nay chắc là cũng đến giờ nghỉ rồi hôm nay khá là lạnh đúng không thì chúc các bạn là có một kỳ tất cả các bạn ở đây Bắt tay chỉ có đông lên thôi chứ không có có gì nhá ok hôm nay chúng ta sẽ nghỉ ở đây nhá Em cảm ơn cô hỏi, em chào cô Ok, chào em nhé Ờ, chào các em Chào cô Em chào cô ạ Ừ, chào các em nhé Chào cô ạ Thank <laughs> you. 